ago or so, I needed to do something that no one likes doing. It wasn't a root canal, although and this is probably even in some ways a little bit worse. What I needed to do was to call my health insurance provider because I had a question. I knew this was going to be an all-morning affair if I could hopefully even talk with somebody. And for any of you that have tried to call either health insurance or other, some other big corporate office type situation, you know that there's like five different menus that you have to navigate through. You hope you pick the right one because none of them really apply to what you're you know, calling for. And then for me, I try to sort of bypass the system, but all that usually happens is it takes me way back to the main menu like two or three times. So finally, I was put on hold for about 10 to 15 minutes and then finally had an opportunity to talk to a real person. And she introduced her position as this. She said, I am a customer service representative. Now, let me ask, what do you think of or sort of what would you say is the purpose of a community or a customer service representative? I think it's kind of in the word, right? You are to provide service to the customer. And yet on that particular day, as I asked a couple questions and received some very short and somewhat crabby responses, I recognized that customer service was going to be very low on the agenda for this phone call on that particular day. In fact, the way I felt, like I felt as I was calling for customer service that I was actually bothering her. And it almost felt like I was a telemarketer calling her during dinner at her home and like, really? <laughs> Like, this is what your job is, right? And my, my wife is teaching me in this season of life that I need to have grace for people that may not be in the best of moods. She, she tells me, people can't be happy all the time, Ben. And so I am learning that, and I do get crabby as well sometimes. And so there probably were some things going on in her life that day that just had her not be so kind or filled with customer service. But regardless of what was going on in her heart or in her life that day, here's one thing that was unmistakable, that on that day, she had forgotten what her purpose was. She had forgotten that she was a customer service representative. Now, when it comes to purpose in life, this is something that's not just important to remember for a customer service representative. Every single one of us will be well-suited and will be blessed if we take time in our lives to consider what our true purpose is. And in fact, and maybe you've experienced this before, and if you haven't, you will. The reality is that people struggle when they don't have a clear sense of purpose. Have you ever had a season like this? where you weren't quite sure exactly what your purpose was, or maybe you had a job where it just felt like you were, you know, clocking in and clocking out, but as far as purpose goes, just didn't seem to have a great deal of significance. I run into high school or college students who are still trying to figure out what it is they want to do with their lives. And this can be one of the most difficult seasons of their entire lives as they just feel like they're a little bit directionless, directionless when it comes to purpose. Or maybe an adult, maybe this is you, who lost your job and weren't quite sure where to go from here. Or maybe it was a parent where the kids moved out of the house and along with the kids moving out, it felt like your purpose was moving out as well. I mean, honestly, anyone who at some time in their life has felt like what they're doing, their season of life is without significance or importance, have felt this thing, which is lack of purpose and how difficult that is. Can be. On the flip side of not having purpose, our, our first fill in is this that a clear sense of purpose has the power to transform your life. And honestly, I think God has wired us, hardwired us with this desire to do something of significance with our lives. 
that all of us have this in us, that we don't just want to, you know, live out our 30 or 40 or 90 years or whatever that might be, but instead that we want to do something. I think God is the one who wired us with that desire. And so today, what I want us to talk about, what what we want to look at from God's word is the reality that each and every one of us has a tremendous amount of purpose and not just some purpose. It is, if you understand the purpose that God has given you, every single day of your life, no matter what age you are, will be filled with importance and significance because that's just how important the purpose God has given us is. So what we're going to be looking at are some words that Jesus spoke um, in what is the longest recorded sermon that we have from his uh, ministry. Uh, You know it as the Sermon on the Mount. It was a message that Jesus spoke while on the, the side of a hill near the Sea of Galilee. And if you were to read the entire sermon, it's Matthew chapters five through seven, you'll find that the primary theme of the message is not how are you saved. He's speaking to people who have already heard that message and now he's sharing with them, what does it look like to live out your faith? What does it look like to follow Jesus once you have come to know him as your savior. And in the midst of that, there is this statement, this section where Jesus speaks about who you are and then talks about purpose. Here's what Jesus says in Matthew chapter five. He says, you, speaking to the Galileans in front of him, you, 2,000 years later, speaking to those who follow Jesus now, you are the light of the world. That's what you are, not what you're trying to be, not what you can choose to be, not what you're slowly becoming as a follower of Jesus. If you follow Jesus, you are the light of the world. And I I want you to think for a moment about those first hearers on the side of that hill 2,000 years ago. They were from an area called Galilee, which is a nice place and all but not an area that was filled with a great amount of significance, not an area that was prestigious in any particular way. And as these Galileans, this ragtag group of people who are under the oppression of the Roman Empire, hear Jesus say something of such significance that you are the light of the world, they had to have been asking themselves, really? Really, we are the light of the entire world? Jesus, do you understand who we are? Do you understand how little influence we have in this world? Do you understand who you're talking to, Jesus? And Jesus knew exactly who he was talking to. And they were right, the Galileans were. That on their own, they were quite insignificant. But that doesn't mean that they couldn't have tremendous purpose, even if from that crowd 2,000 years later, we don't know almost any of the names of the people gathered there that day. So how do insignificant people become such an important part of, of God's kingdom? How is it that we are, even 2,000 years later, lights of the entire world. Well, I want you to imagine that we're camping and we go on a hike that went a little late and as we're trying to head back to our campsite, it's dark and we can't see very well. And I'm like, hey, I got something for us. I go into my backpack and I grab out of it a light bulb How much help is that going to be? None, right? Um, If you're remodeling your kitchen and you're talking about lighting, how well is it going to work to either hang or tape 10 light bulbs on the ceiling? It's not going to work. It's going to be cheap, but it's not going to work, right? Here's the thing about light bulbs. They can give light 
but they don't have a lot of significance by themselves, do they? I'll say it this way, a bulb has no light by itself. It's capable of having light. It has the potential to make a huge difference in your kitchen or on your hike. But the only way it has light, the only way it can be significant is if something else gives it its significance. It has to be connected to a lamp or connected to electricity, and then it has light. Now, I want you to think about that, and let me share with you something Jesus said a little bit later in his ministry. As he's teaching the people in front of him, he says to them, I, Jesus, am the light of the world. So who is it, Jesus? Are you the light of the world? Am I the light of the world? Are we lights of the... What is it? And Jesus' answer to us today is yes. It's all true. And to help you understand even a little bit more about that, here's what Paul wrote to some Ephesians Christians. He wrote, for you... He's talking specifically to Ephesian Christians, but he could as well be talking to any one of us. You were once darkness, but now, having come to faith, now you are light in the Lord. Throughout the New Testament, there is this imagery that Jesus uses and that the Apostle Paul picks up on as well about the difference in our lives between when we came to faith and before we came to faith. And that imagery is that prior to Jesus, it's as if we were living in darkness. All of us were in darkness at one time. I don't know how many of you have ever watched uh, and I know it's not running anymore, but uh, when the Ellen Show was a thing uh, around Halloween time, uh, they had this uh, funny bit that they ran for a few years where one of the, the workers on Ellen would go through like one of these walk-through haunted houses that was entirely dark. And then, you know, people would like jump out of windows or jump out of around corners. Some of you have actually walked through one of these, maybe like at Valley Scare or something like that. It, Darkness can be quite uneasy. Some of you enjoy complete darkness for sleeping, but you wouldn't want to live in complete darkness, right? It is an uneasy feeling not knowing what's ahead of you, not knowing what's around you. I think that is just an amazing picture that God gives to us of what it's like to not know Jesus. It's uneasy. Sometimes I wonder how... How do people handle news of a terminal disease not knowing Jesus? It's got to be so uneasy. How do people hand the un- handle the uncertainty that you know, we're facing in the world right now as gas prices are going through the roof and war continues to go on and things seem to be economically going in a very bad direction? How-, how do people handle these things without Jesus? How do we handle the future without knowing anything about the future if you don't know Jesus? You know what it's like? It's like walking through a haunted house, not knowing what's around the, the next corner. It's, it's living in darkness. And sometimes in our sinfulness, we still allow ourselves, even those who know Jesus, we still allow ourselves to live in that fear. And I would challenge you, Christians, you who know your future, you who know the peace and hope that comes from Jesus, to not allow yourself to live in that darkness very long. You'll be tempted to live in that worry. You'll be tempted to live in that anxiety, but you no longer need to live in the darkness because you have tremendous light. Here's what Isaiah promised 700 years before Christmas. The people walking in darkness the people of this world, have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. That light had a name, and his name was Jesus. And when he came to this earth, he not only had a message of light and of hope and forgiveness, but he was the hope and the forgiveness. He was the light. 
And probably one of the best ways to think about the difference that Jesus made on the cross is yes, he forgives our sins, absolutely. And he allows us as those who know him as our Lord and Savior to live no longer in darkness, but to live in the joy and the peace and the hope of light. It's like being in a dark room where you don't know what's around you and someone turning on a light. And yes, is life still hard? Absolutely. But do we need to be uneasy all the time? Do we need to worry and fear as if we don't know what's ahead? See, light defeated the darkness. And that has changed our eternities, but it has changed our present. Once again, even in a season where so much seems to be uncertain, are we going to live as people who are sort of, you know, stumbling our way through the dark, or are we going to live in the light of the gospel and what Jesus has done? Because number two, Jesus has turned your darkness into light. You live in light. You live with light. You are now light. You are the light of the world. His light can be seen in you and me. Jesus gives us tremendous understanding of who we are in that verse. And then he tells us this, that we have purpose. Let me show you what it is. You could probably already guess it, but let's read what Jesus says. Matthew chapter five, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. And the interesting thing uh, culturally there is that oftentimes they would build small towns on sides of hills so that when travelers walked, that even in the evening, they would be able to see light to help guide them. This was a strategic thing that people did. A town built on a hill, that's why it's built there. It can't be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand And it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others. Who are you? We are lights. What is your purpose as a mom, as a dad, as a student, as a single person, as a husband, wife, pastor, boss, employee, It's right here. As lights, we were meant to shine. I like how Jesus said, you know, who would get a lamp or a bulb, light it up, and then put it under a bowl? How how stupid would that be? The same thing Jesus is saying is how dumb would it be for your primary purpose to be a light, and yet we don't allow ourselves to shine, that we don't shine. So what does that look like? There are so many different ways that we can shine, and it doesn't mean that you have to be, you know, a preacher or even a teacher or to be able to sing in a band, okay? There are so many other ways. In fact, I love how Jesus here just makes it very easy, something any of us and all of us can do. He says at the end, let your light shine that the world may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. You've heard me say this before, but it's, it's worth saying again, that right now in our world and especially in our country, so often Christians seem to be known for what they're against rather than what they are for. And some of that I would say is unfair to Christians. I get that. 
But even if that is unfair in some ways, it doesn't make it untrue. Christians being categorized for what they don't like or what they are against rather than what they are for is just a very real thing in our world. And we're not going to be able to get rid of that altogether. But you know what we can do? We can begin to shine brighter by being intentional with doing what Jesus said here. To do good to love the people around us, to be blessings to the the people around us. Number three, live in a way that shines light on the goodness of God. And and I recognize that, that one person can't change an entire country. That one person in this room or listening online can't change an entire world. But you know what you can do? You can help change in a good way through your actions and love the person who lives across the street from you. You can make a difference in the school where you are. You can make a difference, even if you can't be very specific with your words, you can show what Christian love looks like in the workplace where you're at. Every single one of us have an opportunity to make a difference one person at a time, not to our glory, not so that people say, wow, that guy is so nice. But ultimately, as they understand who we are, Christians, that that the light gets shined not on us, but on, as it says, the goodness and love and grace of God. Talk about purpose. Purpose. I get the, the amazing privilege of being able to, to go to uh, nursing homes or uh, assisted livings and to, to talk with people who, in a, in a very real way, at their age and in their health situation, um, when it comes to their career or what they did for their life, they are unable to do a lot of the things that they used to do. And in some ways, that is a difficult time to consider, okay, what's my purpose? But do you know, as long as there are people in your life, you have tremendous purpose. No matter what season you're in, no matter where you work, you have the ability to shine. To shine a light on the goodness and grace of God. It is in the things that you post and the things that you don't post. It's in the conversations you have and the conversations you don't have. It's in the respect you show your teachers or your boss. It's in the decisions you make ethically at your job. How about this? On the highway. And wherever we are, you are lights. And you have tremendous opportunity wherever you're at to shine to the glory of God. And one of the the places where we get to do this with a group of people is at your church. It's been um, now over two years ago when uh, that word COVID started to, uh, to happen and to, uh, to talk about, and a lot in our lives have changed. For many of us, our jobs have changed. For many of us, habits have changed. For lots of us, our lives have been changed. And one of the good changes, you've heard us talk about this that has happened at North Cross is that we were kind of forced to figure out how do we share Jesus with people who we can't see and who aren't in the room? And with the help of some amazing staff, I wasn't one of them because I don't, I'm not good at this stuff, and also some amazing volunteers. Not only have we, through online broadcast, been able to get out the gospel, but we've been able to do it in a way that I would say is excellently done and that people connect with. And what an amazing blessing now where there are people literally all over the world that we are able to lead to Jesus 
through the ministry that we get to do together of our church. What an amazing opportunity once again this summer where you can be on your vacation and you don't have to, you know, bring me along with you. You wouldn't want that. But you can still bring your church along with you and be able to connect with a message on Sunday or on Saturday or whenever really you want to, right? What an amazing thing is as you're, you know, getting ready to go to that basketball or hockey tournament that you can still spend time in the word and with us in worship. It's an awesome thing. But with that said, can I also push a little bit? We've known each other for a while. <laughs> I think there's also this habit that has happened in all of us where we've found that it's easier just to stay home or it's easier not to come or it's easier just to, you know, watch TV with a cup of coffee in my pajamas, you know? And is there anything wrong with that? No, nothing wrong with that. But at the very same time as I encourage you, the church, it's not a TV show. The church is not even a one-hour event you attend once a week. And what I think is the temptation we've had is that we've been all tempted to treat church like a TV show or an event. And yet the reality is, is that you are the church. The church is not a building or an event or a show. The church is a group of people who grow together in relationship and in mission, who have been put together to mutually encourage and strengthen each other and to do something together that we cannot do on our own. Jesus says also, Paul writes, we are the body of Christ. And even if one toe is not functioning, you're going to feel it. Every single one of us as the church have gifts. And it's so important to understand our purpose is to shine. And so my encouragement for you, our number four fill-in is this. I encourage you not just to watch church, but be the church. And the cool thing is that as I look around this room as I think about all the people that are, are watching and listening online, that there are so many people that I know that have been continuing to engage when it comes to using their gifts to make an eternal difference. But I also know that COVID and the little hiatus that we had, for some of us, we have yet to re-engage. And the thing is, you are the church and your gifts are needed. So I have two specific ways. There, there's a lot of different applications to this message. And for some of you, you already have the way you're gonna apply this, the way you're gonna think about this, the way you know, this is going to affect your day to day. But I wanted to share two specific things in case you were still wondering about it. One thing is this. I would encourage you, as you think about your purpose to shine, to be regular in inviting people to come to church with you. Um, more than likely, some of you are here because of an invitation from someone. And what an amazing thing that I get to do as a pastor is to listen to how the ministry here, how Jesus, through this ministry, has changed people's lives. It is so amazing. And the awesome thing is there are more people that need the blessing of Jesus Christ. And we have this message to share. How easy wouldn't it be to just be in the regular habit of looking for people that you might just simply say, hey, I'm, I'm going to the nine o'clock service. I'll save you a spot. Would you like to go with me? I'll meet you at the front doors. We'll get some coffee. What an awesome opportunity we have. And here's the thing about this church is that one of our values is that we will be a church 
where whether you're a longtime attender or a first time guest, it's a place where we are ready for you. And that God willing, you feel comfortable inviting someone to come with you. The second thing is this, encourage you to think about joining a team. Now for many of you, you're already on a team here at church. For others of you, maybe you were prior to COVID, but haven't gotten back into it. Maybe for still others of you, um, you've never really taken that step from kind of being on the sideline to being on the field. This is one of those days that I would just encourage you to pray about that, to think about that. Um, We're starting to put together our teams that will begin serving in the fall. Our ministry year is September through August. And so if you're in the room, uh, near you is one of these uh, handouts that has a bunch of different opportunities. Uh, If you'd like to to get involved, to consider shining by joining a team. If you're online, there should be a link or otherwise just go to the impact tab of our website. We would love for you to consider being a part of this amazing thing that we get to do together because we will be able to shine brighter when every bulb is involved. Remember those, remember those Galileans 2,000 years ago? Jesus tells them they're the light of the world and their first reaction probably was, really? 2,000 years later, the Roman Empire... You read about it in history books. The Christian church is right here. Not just because of those Galileans, but in part, God used them in part. We hear lots of things about how the Christian church in America is on the decline, and and maybe it is, but it doesn't need to be that way. You and I still today have an opportunity to shine and to make a difference because you have been given tremendous purpose as God, as Christ has taken you from darkness into light. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for being so clear with us as we sometimes stumble around wondering, you know, What is our purpose? You've been so clear to us that you have a purpose for us to make a difference. And whether that's connecting on a team at at church or whether that's just on our own, shining a light so that people may praise you, our Father in heaven, or a combination of both of those things, Lord, we thank you for this purpose that you've given to us. There's truly significance that we have in our lives because first and foremost, you've changed our lives. I would pray, Lord, that you would allow this message to to encourage and motivate every single one of us to consider our place to play in this work that you've given us to do in leading people to your son. To that end, Lord, we thank you for all of the gifts you've given. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.